South Africa is moving towards renewable energy and solar power is seen by many as an important contributor. Peter Haylett as well as Davin Chown are visiting our Cape Town studio this morning to help us unpack this further. Good to have you both with us both gentlemen. I'd like to start off with you uh, Davin. If we take a look at uh, South Africa's energy constraints it's uh, well uh, everyone is it's well known that uh, South Africa doesn't have efficient energy as that renewables need to come into the pipeline but is solar on track and making a significant contribution to the grid? Yeah definitely. It's, um, up to now with the procurement process that government's been running for the last couple of years. We've seen 1,484 megawatts of projects awarded in three bidding rounds, a uh, dramatic drop in prices uh, of the electricity, and these projects are now coming online. So in the last uh, eight months particularly, you've seen solar making a big significant contribution to the South African grid, and we would argue, and I think our colleagues in ESCOM would also see the value that it's now brought in in helping us alleviate some of this pressure on the grid. It's interesting. You alluded to uh, costs there, Devon. Maybe if you can walk us through the significant yeah. changes and percentage changes, if you can quantify them for us uh, as to how drastically they've changed over the years. Look, when we started the bidding program, you know, per um, kilowatt hour, we'll use that measure, you were seeing prices roughly in the range of 2 rand 65 a kilowatt hour uh, for some of the large projects. If you go down to the second bidding round, which was literally a year later, you were seeing prices down at 1 Rand 65, 1 Rand 64. So that is a massive drop. And now in, this third bidding, uh, in the third bidding window, you were seeing people come in uh, with prices that were even lower than that. You were seeing prices probably in the 1 Rand 10, 1 Rand 20 mark. And now we're hearing for this fourth bid window that's just been... Uh, closed uh, two weeks ago. We're hearing some very interesting prices that are well below the, uh, the 90 cent mark. So you're seeing a radical drop from uh, literally two thirds down to, to 90 cents and below. And that is a, I, I think it, it indicates to South Africa that we're starting to see uh, A, the technology playing its rightful role in the market, and B, as we're seeing local manufacture, as we're seeing people becoming comfortable with the technology, knowing how it works. And as we see the greater uptake, we're seeing that dramatic drop in prices. Uh, and I think that's a brilliant uh, signal to South Africa that the technology is going to play a much more stronger role in the energy mix as we move forward. Peter, I'd like to come to you now. Uh, your, your view on uh, this, this, the rollout of solar, uh, as you heard, uh, Devon has a very interesting pointers on it and that it can be a positive contributor to uh, the economy here in South Africa. But are we capitalizing on that from your perspective? Um, if you take a look at it, the city of Cape Town's rolled out solar hot water cylinders. And if you take a look at it also, um, there's a, a big opportunity in rooftop solar where people can now get off-grid or at least mostly off-grid by going rooftop solar. At the moment we're sitting, Devon just mentioned the prices and the prices at, at which solar is now coming in is competes very well with the retail price of electricity as you get it out of municipalities. So it then becomes a, a, a worthwhile exercise for individuals to start looking at this. So from a homeowner's point of view, it's a good way to go. If you take a look at industry, um, it, it is worthwhile for industry to go for it as well because you can, you can certainly supplement your energy. It, it's not good enough at the moment for anything with a big electric motor or anything of that nature, you, you'd have a problem powering that up. But it's certainly the way of the future. Peter, maybe if you can tell us more about the traffic light situation, where back in 2007, the first solar power traffic lights were launched in the city of Cape Town. Has uh, any progress been made since then? Um, I don't have a, a, a big background in the solar power traffic lights. It makes sense, again, because you've got your power close to the source of use, so they're not there's no infrastructure needed in terms of wires and strings to get the power to the traffic light. The problem which, is also, which has been experienced on, say, the Saldana Session Line is where the solar panels have been stolen. So you've got that aspect that you have to take care of. Devin, maybe you can uh, also add your voice to this part of the conversation here. Uh, we heard yeah. rumors about the fact that the, that traffic light situation has not picked up as strongly as uh, one would have hoped for. Uh, are these rumors true? 
Look, it's in certain areas. I mean, if you if you go into Sandton as a good example and look at the traffic lights that are powered there, there's just close to the old McDonald's that everybody knows on that uh, one corner, as well as up near near Hyde Park. There are traffic lights that are being run off solar. They're working very efficiently, and at times when you've got outages, etc., you're seeing those traffic lights still on operating, um, and it just shows that the impact there to keep the system going. For us, I think the issue is that you're able to have these small-scale applications. Um, the rollout is a little bit slower, and the funding might not all be there, but certainly we know that at this moment in time, um, Johannesburg, uh, up in Gauteng, I think the Economic Development Agency is looking at rolling out a massive rooftop program in Johannesburg, and that's going to signal the move from these small-scale applications, which we're seeing working, and which I think, once people are comfortable with, will see a much greater uptake, uh, and that will, of course, be a huge, what we'd like to believe, job creator for the small uh, installers and the small systems guys. But we're starting to see this now greater uptake, where you're seeing these large-scale uh, systems going onto rooftops, uh, both in Johannesburg, Cape Town, other big metro areas. And of course, that market that we call the small-scale sort of domestic market, that is starting to see a bit of an uptake as well. But I think you just mentioned very well that with the pricing and the way we're seeing prices going, uh, coming out of the Munich, it makes a huge amount of sense for a lot of the businesses to hedge themselves. Because while some people say to us, you know, solar might well seem a bit expensive, the real question as South Africans we're asking ourselves is, for the economy, uh, for all the objectives we need to achieve for the targets government to set, what is the cost of not ha having sufficient power? So I think that's the real measure for us. And as you see these different scales of application, you're starting to see a significant impact where not only is it creating jobs, it's seeding new businesses, creating new opportunities, whole new skill sets in South Africa, and of course you're seeing this great uptake from small scale right through to the larger grid connected systems. And it's what we term, from Sapphire's point of view, we coin this phrase about the quiet revolution, mm. where people are just starting to do these things, and you're seeing this creep into different parts of our society, and we believe the impact will be very good for South Africa. Indeed. It's a revolution that will be televised. Thank you so much to both of our guests down in, Ch in Cape Town. Uh, thanks to Peter Haylett. He's the chairperson of the Industrial Focus Portfolio Committee at the Cape Chamber of Commerce and Industry. And Devin Chan, chairperson of the South African PV Industry Association.